an audiophile secret that can increase your musical enjoyment exponentially? It exists. Sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's solve some mysteries. More important than your speaker choice, more important than your source, your turntable, your cartridge, your amplifier, your DAC, it's synergy. It's all of them. That was a trick question. We have to have it synergy, otherwise things just aren't going to sound right. I know this has been mentioned many times, but last night, yesterday, I was listening to some products I got in. One of which I had mm, struggled with for a while. I didn't particularly like it until across the streams. Across the streams. Synergy is kind of like psychiatric, prescription psychiatric meds. You gotta get it just right. And a lot of times it's trial and error. It's kind of like when you get the last three bags of your Lego Ecto-1 set together. It all comes together. See? But it didn't look like Ecto-1 until the last three bags. Then it took shape, and now I have something to look at and enjoy forever until my six-year-old knocks it over and it's in 5,000 pieces. And then it goes into a box because I don't feel like rebuilding it. Synergy is combining different components to basically compensate for maybe something that you don't like, isn't perfect. And sometimes even when things sound great together, if you get Synergy just perfect, it opens up a whole new experience. I don't always get to set up a system exactly how I want it because I'm listening to so many things. But yesterday, the synergy was just right and I felt like I needed to make a video about it. If you're new here, thank you so much for watching. Please do me a favor and subscribe and like this video. I do this for a living, so it means the world to me if you'd like the video and subscribe. Thank you again for watching. So your speaker has a specific frequency response. Your amp has kind of a sound to it, a flavor. Your DAC has a flavor. Your phono cartridge has a flavor. And if you start stacking negative things upon, ne well, they're not necessarily negative things, maybe by themselves. But if there is something that is more revealing on top and then you add a speaker that is pushed forward in the upper mid-range or the treble and then you have an amp that kind of shouts the details from the rooftop, well, that system can be a little bit intense. <laughs> Conversely, if you have a speaker that's very rolled off and then you have a warm, warm amplifier and then you have a photo cart that's not that revealing, well, then it could be just a muddy mess, like a wet blanket thrown over your speakers. And then you have things that are so neutral that they sound boring. A neutral speaker, something like the ELAC Unify 2.0, very neutral speaker. Well, if you put that on a really neutral amp and then a really neutral DAC, things can sound a bit boring. It may not have the issues of a overall super warm system has with lack of detail, but it also doesn't have any personality maybe in the lower mid-range. Maybe the top end just isn't as exciting, kind of in the middle. Personally, I don't love a neutral system. I like a little bit of gumption, maybe some jazz hands on top, maybe a nice punch in the face. That's what I like personally, but you don't have to like that personally. The cool thing is once you get it right, it's amazing. The bad thing is it can take a long time and you have to go through a lot of components to get there. We are gonna talk about just a few components that I feel are a perfect synergy. This is the Sennheiser Drop 5.8X. That's right. Maybe I fooled you into watching a headphone video. It's not just about headphones though. And then this is the X-Duo. TA26, full on 100% tube amp. Is it tuberific? And this is the Just Shelly Labs Arkel 2.5 XL, just like me. So bear with me, even if you don't like headphones, this video isn't exactly about headphones. It's about synergy. We're gonna talk a little bit about the headphones though. 1991, it's a while ago, a sophomore year in high school. A good year for me anyway alex grell came to sennheiser 
and he designed the 580. About five years later, he designed the 580 Jubilee. This is a derivative of that 580 Jubilee. So it's a perfect example of when a company gets it right, it should just stick with what it does well. Kind of like the Sony SSCS5. I don't even know when that speaker came out, but it's been out for a long time. They haven't really changed it, if at all. And it's a great speaker and it sells well. And there's a reason because it's good. Same can be said about the 5.8X from Drop and Sennheiser. This is a product that probably has a ton of reviews. However, it's new to me. They sent these in a couple of weeks ago. I've been listening to them in my little headphone nook in the corner of the living room. And I have this tube amp. The problem with this tube amp is, well, it's not a problem. It looks great. When it first came in, you could see the components inside because the tubes weren't installed. You can see the big caps, the resistors. It's really an impressive unit when you're looking at it. So when I put some headphones on there that I personally enjoy and listen to a lot, I was completely underwhelmed. Quite frankly, it wouldn't drive those headphones. Those headphones being the hi fi and Edition XS and the Dan Clark Aeon RT close back. Both of those headphones are a little bit harder to drive. That's why I thought people talk about tube amps and the HD6XX from Sennheiser, which secret, I don't love those headphones. But when I put the 58X on the X-Duo TA26S, it was really good. Really, really good. So good, in fact, that I had to double check it with the Arkel 2.5 XL. The good news is this headphone sounds good on both of those amps. The Gishelli Labs is more of a neutral amplifier where the X-Duo TA26S finally has what most people would consider to be the tube sound. A little bit warmer, a little bit thicker in the lower mid-range. And I wouldn't say this one's rolled off on top, but the mid-range vocals are a little bit forward. And for whatever reason, with the 5.8X from Drop, it was a match made in heaven. I like this headphone way better than the 6XX on just about everything. It's an unpopular opinion, but I don't really like pro football either. Getting each component in your system to complement each other can be a very hard thing to do and can take years to do it. So if you have a story where your system maybe was okay and then you finally got that synergy right, Put it down in the comments, share it. Tell us how long it took you to get your system sounding perfectly and maybe some of the challenges that you face along the way. So let me describe the sound signature of the 58X. I think it's pretty neutral, much less pushed forward than the 6XX in the mid range. Also, there is a top end on the 58X, which I don't feel there is on the 6XX. What it does share in common with the 6XX is the vocal tonality. And it's not thick, but the voices just sound so natural and so vibrant and full. I love it. And it's $179, $179. I really like this headphone. Comparatively, the 560S I think has better sound stage than the HD. 58X Jubilee. So if you're really into soundstage, maybe look at the 560S, even the 6XX. But the Sonic Signature, I feel, is better suited for me. I would rather sacrifice a little bit of soundstage to have a little bit more punch. Same vocal, not maybe the same, but similar vocal yumminess, mid-range yumminess, and then a top end that's clean. Instruments separated out. So this headphone's a little bit easier to get synergy. The DAC that I was using is the J2, the 9038 Pro Edition. With that setup and the Arco 2.5, it was great. Punchy, neutral, very revealing, really awesome. With the TA26S, I think it notched things up just a little bit. In the mid-range, in sound stage, it made things bigger, it made things wider, and it had a bit more personality. There is nothing wrong with the Arkle 2.5, and I'd switch them back and forth. The Arkle 2.5 is going to play better with more headphones. The TA26 is very limited in which headphones I would recommend on it. 
Couldn't really find a bunch of power specs, but it does say it puts out a half a watt at 300 slash 600 ohm. I don't exactly know how that works. These Sennheisers are 150 ohm. When I put planars on here, nope, didn't work at all. Unfortunately, there's only one review on Amazon and it's a one star review. Seems like they got a bum unit and it came all the way from China. So it didn't look like Amazon had any in stock. It uses a 6N8P tube for the preamp section and a 6N5P tube for the buffer to bring soft and charming sound. It can also be used as a preamp. So if you want some of that tubey goodness, then you can put that in your chain. Let's get back to Synergy. Without just buying a whole bunch of stuff and trying it and A-Bing it with stuff that you already have, it's kind of difficult to find which products work the best together. That's where, well, me, other YouTubers, written reviews, as well as forums come into play. And I think forums are probably the best way to find, although there's some opinions, some strong opinions in there, but getting a vibe of how a specific component sounds is very valuable. Now, that component can sound very different on different systems, so ask a lot of questions. If you're looking for a specific sound and you don't wanna buy just a whole bunch of stuff and continue switching it out, research, research, research. A good way to start would be to have a neutral amp, neutral source, whether that's a DAC or a phono cartridge, and then start to change things with your speaker because at least with speakers you have a frequency response graph. And I think it's easier to describe a speaker's frequency response than it is to describe an amplifier. A lot of times with amplifiers they're a lot more similar than they are different where speakers can have a vastly different sound signature. And when you are searching for that perfect synergy, only change out one component at a time. Don't change out your speakers and your amp, or your speakers, your amp, and your DAC. You gotta just eliminate one variable at a time and start adding things in and trying to get it to sound better or move the needle closer to what you're looking for. So that's pretty much it on synergy. If you wanna learn more about the 58X and the TA26S, Stick around. I'm shocked at how much I love these headphones. I know they've been out for a while and they've been out in some form or another since I graduated from high school. So while these are long in the tooth, there's a reason why they're long in the tooth and they keep selling because they are good. They have the little notch right here so you don't get the hot spot. They have velour ear pads. 150 ohms is a little bit harder to drive, but this tube amp had no problem driving it. And the solid state amps that I had, I don't think you're gonna have an issue driving these unless it's maybe a dongle DAC or something like that. Has the Sennheiser proprietary connections, which is kind of a gripe of mine, but it's Sennheiser, they can do whatever they wanna do. And then comes with about uh, probably a seven to eight foot cord. All plastic, which is fine. I've had the 6XX for a long time. They're all plastic. And They've worked out just fine. Open back, blah, blah, blah. Love the sound signature. A little bit fun. Neutral, but fun. And $179, spectacular. Remarkable. Amazing. I love them. X-Duo TA26S. I wouldn't get this if you're really into plain, or most of your headphones are planars. I wouldn't get it. I could not get it to work. Well, it made sound but bass was distorted. I tried the Edition XS, I tried the Sundara, and I tried the Dan Clarks, and none of them worked. They vocals were okay, but as soon as bass came in, it was distorted. Like there was something legit wrong. Like I thought maybe my cable was broken. But the thing about it was when I'd switched it to the Arkle 2.5, Everything was fine. So the X-Duo likes dynamic drivers and not planar drivers. I think both of these are good. This is gonna be a much harder sell because this comes in around $300 and limits what you can really use it with. I think it's built wonderfully. It looks good and it sounds really good, but it's not gonna sound really good on a lot of things. I love the 58Xs, the Jubilees, highly recommend them. So if you wanna support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio man. Every Sunday night we have Patreon only Zooms, Patreon only Facebook, Patreon only Discord, 
can also use the links in the description. Those will be affiliate links, which means if you click and you buy, I do get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more. So it's a great way to support the channel. You can also sign up for Amazon Music Rune or Title. Links in the description. Click sign up. Usually they have 30 day trials. Even if you quit, I get a couple of bucks. You can put a tip in the tip jar, buy me a cup of coffee. It's down at the bottom of the video next to the share button, but don't feel compelled to buy me anything or give me anything. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Try to get that synergy right. Maybe get 5.8X, which I highly recommend, or this tube amp, which is great in some applications, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.